Hi everyone and welcome back, it's Vicky here and today we are going to take a quick look on the September release by my favorite things. I'm going to show you all the products that have been released and then I'm going to share a few cards that I made so you can see most of the products in action. And let's start with the smallest stamps for this month, they all feature characters. This is the Grande Sized Love, it is um, coffee themed, since uh, the little girl is holding a cup of coffee. You will find there are matching ties for these stamps, I like to store them at the back, but you need to get them separately. The next two stamps are school themed, so this is the Lessons in Love with a Girl and there is this one which is called Favorite Teacher with a Boy. And of course on these stamp sets along with the character you do get matching sentiments. Now let's move on to two stamp sets that are all about critters. If you love critters you are going to have fun with those two. So this first one is called uh, Sweater Weather in the Woods. It features lots of animals and comes with many sentiments. And the second one is called uh, Sweater Weather on Safari. It comes again with four animals and lots of sentiments. Let's move on to the flower stamp set for this month. This is called Floral Focus, this is a whole stamp, it's a lovely flower arrangement and there is also a matching die. Now this is great if you love coloring in stamped images with your favorite coloring mediums and it comes with lovely sentiments as well. Now these are the two sentiment stamp sets for this month. The biggest one is called Bitty Thanks and Gratitude and in this one you get tons of sentiments perfect for thank you cards and uh, thanksgiving cards. The smallest one is called cup of love and it comes with sentiments that have to do with coffee. Now just like every month they come up with a new Stacy Yakula stamp set. This is called piles of fun and it's all about uh, fall with all the leaves and the little creatures. If you mix and match these stamps you can create lovely scenes and there are also matching dies available if you want to pop all those images on your cards. Now let's take a look at the background stamps for this month. This is called Brush Splatter Background, great for adding some interest on the background and I will be using it today to add a snow effect. And this one is the Knitted Sweater Background Stamp. I think it adds a, a lovely effect on uh, winter cards and I will be using this one as well so you can see it in action. And let's take a look at the dies for this month. So this is a cover up that adds lovely stars at your background. This is the Skinny Stripes die and it also comes in a mini version. It adds a grid on your background and I love it because you can tuck inside flowers for example or other focal points. These are the stitchable falling stars and you can use the stars and the trails separately. And here comes my favorite product for this month. These dies come in a mini version as well and uh, it is called Cafe All Day. I will be using this so you can see how you can uh, put something together. And of course you can combine it with the coffee themed sentiments. Now I'm going to start making a few cards using many of the products from this release so you can see them in action. I am starting with the floral focus. I did the die cutting first just because this is a solid die and now inside the gap I am adding the stamp. I'm going to close the door of my Misty and then inside that negative space I'm going to add the actual die cut. This way I am going to end up with a perfect stamping on this die cut, otherwise it would be quite difficult to align that solid die on top of my stamped image. Of course for coloring your image you can go with any of your favorite coloring mediums. I decided to go with my Prismacolor pencils today just because I think that if they needed some love, I like to switch between coloring methods since I love using all the different products that I have in my stash. So here I'm using uh, two different shades of uh, pink and then blend everything out with the white pencil. So all I'm doing here is to use the darker shade at the base of each petal. Then I will switch to the lighter shade of pink and add just a little bit more. And then I'm going to blend those colors together using the white pencil, making sure that I leave kind of white the tip of each petal. This is a very easy technique to achieve. I'm working on watercolor paper, by the way, just because I love the texture of it. 
And of course I'm going to do the same thing for the leaves as well using shades of uh, green. Now when I'm coloring with my uh, pencils I always feel more relaxed. I don't have to move fast when I'm switching in between colors, which is the case when I use alcohol markers where you need to have the area where you're coloring quite wet so that you end up with a good blending. I always find coloring with pencils much easier. Now to put my card together I just added a thin strip of uh, pattern paper with black and white stripes at the bottom of my card base. I did use some um, uh, foam tape at the back of my die cut just to pop that image on my card. I'm using my scissors to cut off all the excess paper and now all I need to do is to add a sentiment. For that I went with uh, the same stamp set and uh, I stamped with love, very versatile, I can use it for pretty much any occasion, and I went with black. I created my card base out of pink cardstock that matches the color of the flowers, and gives a lovely border around my panel, and I'm going to finish it up by adding some Nouveau drops on top of my flowers and the leaves. Here are some close-up photos, and of course you can get so many different looks depending on the way you're going to color the flowers. Moving on to the second card for today and I will be using the rubber stamp. This is the background stamp which is called Knitted Sweater. I'm going to work on craft cardstock and uh, I'm using vintage photo for that. I am going for a tone on tone look here. I'm going to do that a couple of times to get a good impression and this is going to be my background. For this card I'm going for a coffee themed card so I will play mainly with uh, brown colors. Now this is the dye set which is called Cafe All Day. You can mix and match the dyes to create the different types of uh, beverages. Like uh, it even gives you a straw if you want to and decorative uh, dyes for your cups. I am going for a coffee cup today. So I will be using these three dyes that I separated. And I'm going for a shaker card just because they are really fun to make but they are also fun to receive. So I placed the tie at the center of my background just to create a window there. I'm also adding a little bit of thinking at the edges and this is vintage photo again, tone on tone look everywhere. For the top of my cup I went with white and I just inked up the edges as well. I used double sided tape to stick uh, one of those shaker pouches that have been just released and fit inside that window. And you can find everything linked down below just like always. So I'm removing the double sided tape again and inside I'm going to add some confetti. I'm adding a few scoops of those uh, Nouveau confetti. These are actually stars I believe and you will find that product linked down below in a lovely copper shade. I'm going to cover up completely that uh, window making sure that I press nicely and nothing is going to fall out. I'm going to stick down the top of my cup and it's starting to look like a coffee cup now. I'm going to do more embellishments for this one. I have some corrugated cardstock here and I use the die to cut out this uh, shape. I run it through my die cutting machine which has flattened it a little bit but I still get the effect that I want. This is where I decided that I want to add a little bit of that um, inking. And that's again by using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. My coffee cup looks nice as it is, but you will see that I'm going to do even more embellishments on top. For now, I'm going to stick this panel on top of this um, green cardstock. And again, my panel is slightly smaller than the card base, just because I always like to have a little bit of a frame around it. Now I'm using one of the critter stamp sets and for this one I'm choosing the owl just because it is the smallest one and it fits nicely on top of my cup. I'm going to stamp that with a Versamark ink and apply white embossing powder. I'm going to heat set it and then cut it out and this is going to be the label for my uh, cup. So you see here I'm using one of my circle dies and I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And I deliberately went with green for that since it reminds me of uh, Starbucks, obviously. I also stamped the sentiment with uh, the same Distress Oxide ink and I'm inking up the edges. The sentiment comes from the other stamp set with critters, which is called Sweater Weather in the Woods.
For the third card today, I'm going with the polar bear. This comes from the sweater weather in the woods stamp set. I'm going to stamp my email and color it with my alcohol markers. This is going to be my focal point and uh, I'm going to create a little scene. Coloring the bear is really quick and easy. All I do is to color just the jacket with greens and then uh, I'm going to add just a touch of uh, gray as a shading on the actual bear, just keeping it mainly white. I used the matching dye to cut it out and now I'm going to work on my background. For the background I'm working on blue cardstock and I will add snow by stamping the brush splatter background. I am using my Misty. I'm going to ink up everything with embossing ink and then I'm going to apply white embossing powder. Now the embossing powder that I'm using here is actually a puffy one which means that when you melt it it's going to puff and make uh, and become even more dimensional as the normal embossing powder. If you don't have that it could work either way but this is perfect for snow. So here I am using my heat gun, making sure that I melt everything and I have a lovely background scene full of snow. Now I have already created a few snow banks for my background scene. For that I used a glitter cardstock by Novo and you will find that linked down below. I used um, glue for the back layer of the snow banks but for the first layer I did use some foam tape so I get some dimension there. And I did add foam tape at the back of my bear. In the same stamp set there is a stem um, that you can stamp and cut so that you can stick it directly on top of your cup, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And you can see that I have already uh, stuck this panel on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half and I create it out of white cardstock. I added a sentiment from the Cup of Love stamp set and my card is ready. Now let's move on to the last card for today, for that I will be using the cover-up die that cuts out these uh, stars. I'm going to create a panel out of black cardstock and I will use glitter paper for the background. Now of course you can go with colored uh, cardstock, you can use rainbow themed cardstocks or any pattern paper at the back. There are so many different ways to put together a card using this cover-up die which uh, at the same time creates a lovely background or even a focal point at the same time. So all you need to do is to just stick on top a sentiment and you are ready to go. It is a card that you can quickly make and at the same time you have a great impact. So you can see here I am sticking down at the back the a glitter cardstock and I only have two pieces at the top and at the bottom covering up only two rows of stars. I used my scissors to cut out the excess cardstock and then I'm going to stick this panel on top of a card base which is black. This way I am going to stick the sentiment at the center of this panel and I will end up having a lovely contrast without uh, glitter stars at the back interfering with the glitter sentiment at the top. I'm using Nouveau Deluxe at the back to stick this down and this is an old die by my favorite things. I don't know if it is still available. I, if it is still is, you will find it linked down below. It's one of those dies that I have been using again and again on my cards. To complete my sentiment I also stamped Shine Bright and I think this is a great card to congratulate someone. And it works both for boys and girls. And here is a close-up photo on the last card for today. So these were the projects for today, I hope you had fun and that you got inspired and maybe this video helped you out to decide which of the products from the latest MFT release is for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of the four cards that I shared for today is your favorite. Thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.